How's it going today, folks? I am actually downstairs in my basement where I used to run a reptile rescue and, of course, where I got my start uh, raising uh, invertebrates, mainly tarantulas. And a lot of people don't realize just how many species of tarantula there are, but as you can imagine, just like fish, and like you look at cichlids, and there are new world cichlids and old world cichlids, they are new world and old world tarantulas with different behaviors, different levels of aggression, different defensive capabilities. And so raising tarantulas is a whole lot of fun. Uh, as they all aged out, I would send them off to a breeder. For those of you that don't know, male tarantulas, once they molt or shed their skin into sexual maturity usually do not survive another molt and so it would be commonplace to send them off to a more experienced breeder to then continue that bloodline in exchange for like store credit or something along those natures and then females of course being more valuable would molt again and again and and some species live up to 30 years and i still have some tarantulas though they are not kept down here um, excuse me, I have the hiccups for breakfast. Uh, they are kept upstairs where the house is inherently warmer, so I no longer have to heat this basement to the same extent. It's still heated a bit, uh, but, but not like it was, you know, where it was 80 plus degrees down here all the time. Uh, but why we're down here today is to reinforce the floor joists that are above me with floor jacks in order to handle the 800 pounds of weight of a 90 gallon fish tank um, I probably don't have to reinforce these floor joists in that way but I figure better safe than sorry uh, so I'm gonna come down here and do that but to do that I have to move all of these shelves out from under these floor joists here and I'm gonna go ahead and give them a wipe down while I'm at it uh, kind of set them off to the side I'm gonna wear some <clears throat> I'm wearing some work gloves because I live in an area that is prone to hobo spiders, and hobo spiders are very similar to a brown recluse in the effects of a bite, although they are more aggressive and larger. Uh, I also, I have already found just in setting up filming, this little guy right here, this is a female Lactrodectus, uh, I believe it's Variola, which is the species of Black Widow. Oh, you won't even focus. Come on. This is the species of Black Widow that will be common throughout Montana and Canada. It's much smaller and a far less athletic spider than like your Lactrodectus, Macturn, uh, or your other southern Black Widows. It's also a little less dangerous as a result, really small pinchers. I'm not even in frame. Uh, but still a bit dangerous. This is the time of year where if you do find them, you will because they come inside, it's cold out, they're trying to find somewhere warm. Um, so we have to be on the alert for these guys as well. They are one of the few spiders in the world, for those of you that don't know, that will occupy a spider web that is just left over. Most spiders uh, and tarantulas, which are technically not true spiders, they are arachnids, uh, have enough pheromones on their web that other spiders will not come and occupy them. But black widows are one of those spiders where they're like, hey, free home, and I'm moving right in. So we got the shop back down here. We're gonna be cleaning through all the corners as well. And uh, I'm gonna take you along for the ride though. Let's time lapse this, break it down for you, because this is probably gonna take me three hours, four hours at least, at least that's what I budgeted for time. And uh, you don't wanna sit here for four hours, so I'm gonna get to work. This is something worth showing you guys. This is actually a two and a half gallon, which I don't know if any of you have seen an actual production like Aquion two and a half gallon tank, but here it is next to a 10 gallon. 
So considerably smaller than a five. And here it is next to a five. These are turned vertical, of course, for arboreal tarantulas, but it's the smallest tank Aquium makes, and they're pretty awesome and a great way to actually display tarantula species uh, when they're in these smaller enclosure sizes. A lot of people, myself included, will sometimes use just blacked out uh, Tupperware style enclosures. But if you have something beautiful that you kind of also want to display, but you don't want lost in this huge enclosure where it can't find food items, these two and a halfs are a great option and your local aquarium shop can probably order them for you. So with the glare, it's kind of hard to see, but here's a good example of some of my older custom enclosure work. Some of you might recognize this as a normal fish tank centerpiece, uh, but this is an example of what I used to do quite a bit of, which was custom enclosures for people uh, that I would then, you know, take commission work on and sell them to them. Uh, but mostly I did a lot of it for myself too. I really enjoyed it quite a bit. And as you can see, most of these are custom enclosures with the, uh, the fish tanks turned on end. I know most fish enthusiasts are not familiar with that. It's kind of fun. This is a fun one to show you. This was an enclosure for a Chromatopelma cyanopubescens or a green bottle blue. They're an amazing tarantula with a bright blue color as an adult and lots of striations as a juvenile. But as you can see, they're extremely heavy Weber. And I don't know if you can see in here, but they're actually little like army tanks and Humvees and stuff that they I put in here. So it's kind of a very post-apocalyptic looking scene. Uh, definitely a fun tarantula, lots of feeding response. And then uh, this type of heavy, heavy webbing from a five inch tarantula is kind of uh, a lot of people's worst nightmare. It's just, this is just terrifying for them, so I thought it'd be fun to show you.
All right, pretty excited to have this project over and done with. We've reinforced the floor above us with three 9,100 pound floor jacks. Uh, realistically, probably didn't need to do this, but it's extra peace of mind considering you're throwing an 800 pound fish tank right above us here, and we don't want to see it come crashing down into the basement. Uh, Speaking of that tank, we are really close to filling it. It looks like middle of the week we should have our light bar, uh, which is you know, just the fun part of getting it set up. But really the important part is we should also have our plugs for our under gravel filters. Then we can get our substrate set up, set in our rock, plant our live plants, and get it filled. I'm pretty excited. I can't wait to see it from there. We can get some bacteria starter in there, start cycling it, and uh, get the tank stable before we go dropping in a bunch of fish. Speaking of, ah, there's something in my eye. Speaking of fish, it looks like we're gonna be going with cichlids. So down below, comment your favorite cichlids, either in picture or in at least, you know, the name of the fish so I can search it out. Uh, so far, really digging the convict cichlids, but there are a ton of cool fish in this setup. Uh, that we can choose from and I can't wait to see really what all you guys have so drop that in the comment down below and if you want to see this uh, tank all set up make sure to subscribe throw that bell on so you get a notification you don't miss the videos and thanks for watching guys